What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Larry Wright for the $25 donation via the Cash App. Much respect to him for showing love. Once again, longtime subscriber to both uh, the YouTube channels and the Patreon. Longtime subscriber salute to you. All right, so this is a question that uh, I think his channel name was NBA Historian wanted me to give my opinion on. And I think the question was, and forgive me if I'm misremembering it, but I believe the question was, what do I think would have happened if Mark Jackson had never been traded from the New York Knicks back in 1992? All right. If I remember correctly, I think Mark Jackson was traded to the Clippers in exchange for, I believe it was, ooh, I think it was uh, Charles Smith, I'm trying to remember, was it Charles Smith and Doc Rivers? I think it was Charles Smith and Doc Rivers. And, um, I mean, look, we don't know what would have happened, right? But I will say this. Given how much of a bust overall Charles Smith generally was, with the New York Knicks. And given how I think Doc Rivers most definitely had a better career with the Hawks than he did with the New York Knicks. Um, I tend to believe that if Mark Jackson was on the Knicks, And let's say he stayed there for the rest of the decade, right? I tend to think that there's a chance that they could have beaten the Bulls in 1993. Um, I'm going to tell you, matter of fact, if everything went right for the New York Knicks, right, and as far as, you know, health and whatnot, With Mark Jackson, they could have possibly won a championship in 93, 94. I don't know about 97, man, because of all the injuries. I don't know about 97. I think it's possible, to, at the very least, though, they could have made it to the NBA Finals in 97. Uh, had that ruckus with them in the Nick uh excuse me Miami never happened. But let's focus on ninety three. Now in real life the New York Knicks won sixty ball games that year. They had the second best record in the NBA behind the Phoenix Suns, the best record in the Eastern Conference, and they had whole court throughout the playoffs against every team in the Eastern Conference, including the defending world champion Chicago Bulls. Now keep in mind, with Mark Jackson on the team, a fifty one and thirty one Knicks team went seven games with the Chicago Bulls in 1992 in the, I believe it was the Eastern Conference semifinals. Many people consider that New York Knicks team to have one of the best defenses in NBA history and perhaps one of the top 10 perimeter defensive backcourts of all time. Now, imagine the 93 Knicks, although they did lose X-Man and Mark Jackson, of course. But imagine that New York Knicks team in 93 with Mark Jackson. Because look, one of the weaknesses that the Bulls had, in my, in my opinion, from watching them, the triangle offense, the one glaring weakness that they had was at the point guard position. Because the Bulls never really had a true point guard. You know, not during the Jordan years. Um, sure, they had Ron Harper play point. Sure, they had an older John Paxson. Sure, they had B. John Armstrong, who was the best point guard, in my opinion, they had during that era. But with Mark Jackson, that would have been a size and strength advantage for the New York Knicks. At that position, let's go 93. BJ was what, six? 
six two. I think Pedro was six two, six one, one eighty something. Mark Jackson was six three, I think, and he was one ninety five, two hundred. But he was extraordinary. He was a a strong two hundred. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, BJ may only be 10 or 15 pounds lighter, but Mark was strong. As you can see, as Mark has gotten older, he's filled out a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he just had one of those physiques where, yeah, the scale is saying 195, but you look at him, and that's mostly muscle. Uh, so, And you see a lot of these guys, they fill out, fill out as they get older. So, like... Um, how uh, Dennis Johnson, although he developed uh, obviously eating problems led to obesity, was contributing to his heart attack and probably some genetic factors at play as well. But you can see that that type of frame. Uh, another guy that had that type of stocky frame. Two other guys that come to mind: Joe Dumars and Vinny Johnson. But Mark Jackson had that same frame. And, you know, Mark Jackson's key. One of the things he did that was so effective. Uh, Matter of fact, it was so effective to the point where they instituted a rule, the five second rule to get it, to stop it. Well, you know, the five second rule where a player can't, or at least they're not supposed to back down the, uh, defensive player for more than five seconds, though. I'm not going to say his name, but a certain player who I shall not name that has a ball spot and, you know, a beard. I've seen that guy violate that rule so many different times, but that's just another, that's another, Video for another day. Um, Mark Jackson uh, would have been a, a a problem for the the Chicago Bulls. Not saying a Magic Johnson or John Stockton level problem, but he would have been a problem. Okay, uh, Mark Jackson, from what I remember, usually, oftentimes was a, a problem. Like as far as posting up players. I mean, we had the teardrop. One of my fact, one of the first ones I saw that really had that shot that implemented it consistently. Uh, and he could knock down the open three. He could knock down the open three and open jump shot. And he was not a knockdown three point shooter like today's guys, but he could knock them down. You know what I'm saying? I remember at a, like a 33 to 34% clip. So he could hit that shot. Um, but just just the fact that he was a a high level uh, point guard. Remember, he won Rookie of the Year. Um, I could see him getting, say, Patrick Ewing easier opportunities. I could see him getting um, John Stocks better looks because that's what he did. That's what Mark Jackson did. You know. It's no coincidence that the Pacers, their best years were when Mark Jackson was at the point guard position. In 95, when he played with them, uh, Mark Jackson, they went to what the Eastern Conference Finals. I remember, I think in 97, he got traded to the Nuggets, and the Pacers sort of retreated a little bit. And then he comes back in a midseason trade in 97. And then by 98, they went 58 ball games near the East Coast Finals again. That's the Mark Jackson effect. He made teams. He improved teams. Matter of fact, Patrick Ewing's best years of his career, when you really look at it, for when he played with Mark Jackson. Charles Oakley's best numbers came when he was playing with Mark Jackson. Matter of fact, let me uh, look that up. I guarantee you, if I look at Charles Oakley's numbers, they went down a bit. After Mark Jackson retired, I'm not sure. Uh, I think he was traded. Let me see. Yep. Went from averaging 11, point, 11 points and 12 rebounds to 7 points and 9 rebounds. And uh, same thing's probably true of Patrick Ewing. You know, still great players, but a guy like Mark Jackson, you know what I'm saying, uh, 
he was a great facilitator. He wasn't a great all-around individual player. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he was a Hall of Gooder, if there's a such term. Yeah, so I think he could have definitely been a difference maker to get the Knicks, at least until the NBA Finals in 93, and possibly maybe the difference in winning a championship in 94. Most definitely. I agree with that. Mark Jackson, and I'm a Bulls fan saying that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of those Knicks-Bulls games were very, very close, and the difference was just Michael Jordan. So now, then again, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't bet against Mike necessarily, but if you use your common sense, as close as some of those series were with a Mark Jackson, yeah, you would think that he could have been a difference. And, you know, like I, I, the way I remember, man, Mark Jackson improved every team he was with. Uh, I'm going to look at something right quick. I'm going to look at the 96-97 Nuggets. Well, when he had time to work with, he improved that team, I guess I should say. Well, I definitely see that even that year they went 21 61. They got most of their wins before Mark Jackson was traded. So, you know, there's something. Damn. I see after they, after Mark Jackson was traded, they had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a 10 game losing streak. And then another one, two, three, four, five, six game losing streak. Yep. But anyway, that's just my take on that, man. Yeah. I think if Mark Jackson stayed with the Knicks, they could have, uh, Definitely contended for a championship and possibly won one. Anyway, tell me what you guys think.